is Career Day Interviews hosted by Donald Hovis of the Shakora of the Myrtle Beach Socorro Rotary Club. Take it away, Donald. Good morning, uh, Terry. Thank you for having me. Happy Monday. Hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. Uh, we are pleased to be joined uh, this morning by our current district governor of our Rotary District, Mr. Johnny Moore from the Chapin Sunrise Rotary Club. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Donald. Good morning, Terry. So, Johnny, uh, talk a little bit about your Rotary career for everyone on here. Okay, great. I, uh, I was asked to come to uh, a Rotary Club meeting by a customer back in uh, 2007. And uh, thinking that I wanted him to become a better customer, I said, sure, I'll go with you. And I went to my first Rotary Club meeting at the Rotary Club of St. Andrews, Columbia, uh, where I joined and very quickly got involved. And I, I, I didn't get fully involved until I'd been in Rotary for about a year. And I learned then about all the things that Rotary was doing around the world and our communities and decided that, you know, I really wanted to do more. Uh, so I actually joined Rotary for the networking opportunity, but I stayed in Rotary for a lot of different reasons, including the fellowship that I've experienced and um, the opportunity to serve and make a difference in the world, but also because Rotary offered uh, some opportunities for leadership growth that I didn't know I was going to, uh, to get. And I would encourage anyone who's interested in uh, improving their leadership skills to get involved in, in Rotary for that reason as well. Well, thank you, Johnny. Um, Terry, I do not see it live on Facebook. So we might have to back up here. Oh, there we go. So start over. Uh, Terry. Terry, you're muted. Terry, you're muted. Good morning. This is Career Day Interviews, hosted by Donald Hovis of the Myrtle Beach Shakora Club. Take it away, Donald. Good morning, Terry. Good morning. Happy Monday. Hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. Uh, we're pleased to be joined by our current district governor of our Rotary District, uh, Mr. Johnny Moore of the Chapin Sunrise Rotary Club. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Don. Thanks for having me. Yeah, pleased to have you. Excited to hear you talk here in just a few minutes. But to get us kicked off, can you talk uh, a little bit about your Rotary career for those that are watching? Sure, be happy to, Donald. Thank you. I joined Rotary in 2007 in the Rotary Club of St. Andrews, Columbia, when I was invited to, to a, my first meeting by a customer and thinking I wanted him to be a, become a better customer, I uh, asked him to come along. I, I went, decided I'd go. And uh, after, after joining, I realized also what Rotary was doing around the world and uh, decided I wanted to be get, get a little bit more involved and I did so. Uh, it took me about a year before I finally figured out that this was a, a great organization that it was um, and kind of jumped in with both feet at that point. I, I realized that uh, Rotary also offered opportunities for leadership growth and uh, Rotary's helped me in so many different ways, but uh, helping to grow my leadership skills is one of those. I would encourage anyone who thinks uh, they might be looking for that opportunity to, in, to consider uh, Rotary. It was a great, great opportunity there. I transferred to the Chapin Sunrise Club in uh, J July of 2012, and I've been a member there since then. And uh, uh, being a competitive person that I am, I've always tried to maintain 100% attendance, and that's been fun to try to keep up with. So I've done that. And then it was uh, just a few years ago that uh, I decided to uh, try to take the plunge and, and join leadership in Rotary at a little different level. And I put my name in for district governor and fortunately uh, for me was uh, nominated and, uh, and, and elected to serve in that capacity. It's been a great year. I would uh, encourage anyone who has any inclination for leadership to get involved in some aspect of leadership in the Rotary. It is very, very rewarding. 
Yeah, you've, you've had a very unique year as our district governor with what we're kind of going through right now. So I would be interested to, you know, I'm sure um, you've had to change things around. Uh, our all club conference was canceled. Uh, but, you know, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, the decision to cancel all club conference was something that weighed on my mind for uh, uh, several weeks before we finally made the decision to pull the plug. Um, it's one of those kind of things that every district governor, I think, looks forward to is uh, being able to celebrate the year that we've had as a, as a Rotary district. And that celebration revolves entirely around the work of the clubs and the Rotarians in the district. It has really very little to do with uh, uh, the district quote itself uh, because it's, uh, it's really the effort of the Rotarians and the clubs in the district that make the district what it is. And we have a great district because we have great clubs and great Rotarians throughout. It was, a, it was just uh, very sad not to be able to celebrate that. But the other thing that we've uh, been experiencing now is trying to find a way to keep Rotarians together and keep Rotarians involved. And I know that we have Rotarians across the district who have found ways to help during this uh, coronavirus uh, crisis that we're facing, uh, either by going out and picking up groceries and prescriptions for elderly folks who can't get out or are, are afraid to get out. And uh, we have other people that are uh, providing supplies and finding ways to get uh, goods to the community and to the, uh, maybe the caregivers or the first uh, responders. Uh, so there's a lot going on in the district, but trying to stay connected has been a, a big thing. And, and we've been recommending Zoom meetings and go to meetings and all kinds of other uh, options uh, for people to uh, try to continue to have some com contact with, uh, with their clubs. It's been, it has been a challenge. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure, and I'm, I, we thank you for your wonderful leadership throughout this year, and we look forward to the next few months and hoping uh, by the end of the Rotary year we're back uh, hopefully meeting as clubs. That would be, that would be awesome. It would be um, great to get back to normal. Yes. During these um, interviews, Johnny, over the last couple of weeks, uh, I had typically have ended with either the vision statement of Rotary or the four-way test, how we end every Rotary meeting throughout the district. But today, the topic of the conversation with you is the four-way test. So I'm excited to hear uh, what you have to say. Thanks, Donald. Um, well, let me, let me first of all uh, mention again, you know how important the uh, vision statement, Rotary's vision statement is to me. It's something that we sort of hinged our uh, conference theme on too, uh, where together we see a world where dot, 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 and fill in the dots uh, with what Correct. you would like to see, how you'd like to see the world. But the four-way test is something that is also extremely important, not only to Rotary, but I think, but to, to me as an individual and to a lot of other people's individuals. Give you a little history. The four-way test uh, actually came about in the early 1930s. There was a gentleman named Herbert J. Taylor who was hired to um, uh, basically uh, save a company, uh, the Club Aluminum Products uh, Company, from bankruptcy and from extinction, basically. He, he came in and he looked at the organization and realized that there were a lot of things going on in the organization that just were not as ethical as they should be. Uh, it had to do with uh, bashing competition and uh, some of their advertising was uh, just not telling the truth. And he really struggled with that. So he tried to come up with a, uh, an easy to remember uh, slogan or something that would uh, that would help the company uh, turn around. He was, he felt like he was the only one in the company that that had a, any hope that the company could survive at that point. He said when he when he couldn't really come up with anything, he he finally just turned to prayer and and started uh, uh, pleading for a, a way to uh, put into words what he wanted to say and. Uh, you know, basically coming from one of those prayers, he just picked up a piece of paper and wrote down 24 words. And those 24 words became known as the four-way test. He shared those uh, four, what the four-way test and those words with uh, the managers of the four departments of his company. They all agreed that they were uh, exactly what they needed. 
and they started to use those to uh, look at everything they did. And in fact, he came up with and said that it was going to be the four-way test of the things that they think, say, or do. And um, and those words are uh, I, they're just they're just powerful when you think about it. First of all, and let's let's just go through them. The, the first test is it the truth? And he started looking at the advertising of the company and realizing that in some cases it wasn't. So they rewrote unbelievable the numbers of ads and, and uh, copy. The second one, is it fair to all concerned? And he started looking at uh, his competition and realizing that, uh, you know, he, did, he wouldn't want his competition talking about his company the way his sales folks were talking about them. So uh, he, he made some changes there. Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And, you know, and, and uh, will it, or, I'm sorry, the next one I think is, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And uh, uh, he realized also that uh, the customers out there were, were looking at this and saying, you know, this is, this is not really a way to, to build goodwill. And then would it be beneficial to all concerned is the last one. And he realized then that, uh, that they needed to be doing something that was not only beneficial to the company, but beneficial to the customers and the stockholders and everyone involved in the, in the organization. That was the early 30s. In 1940, he presented this uh, four-way test to Rotary International. Now, you have to understand that Herbert J. Taylor was a Rotarian before he came up with the four-way test and when he was uh, brought in to save this company. Because by 1940, he was actually a Rotary International director. Uh, which is a, a very important position within Rotary. And uh, be, during the time he was a director is when he presented the four-way test to uh, Rotary International, and Rotary International adopted the four-way test almost immediately at that point to become uh, part of, of the uh, position statement, if you will, of what Rotary International was about. It is, it's, it's sort of our compass. It, it tells us it, it, if we look at everything we do in terms of that four-way test, then it, it, it says that we are going to operate in an ethical and friendly and cooperative manner uh, in a way that is, that is not going to be uh, detrimental to anyone, we hope. Now, we'll tell you that even having the four-way test and knowing the four-way test, it's something that you have to apply every day in everything you do. And even having it, there are times that, uh, that I know that I fail and I know other people do. But when we do, it's important to go back to it and to recognize that and to you know, apologize if necessary or do whatever we need to do to make things right so that we can continue to support uh, what we do with the four-way test. I love it. I, I, I've gone to 79 clubs this year, and we've ended pretty much every meeting that I've been there with the four-way test. Uh, I don't know of any club in our district that does not end their meeting that way right now. It's It's been great. Yeah, it, it is very, very, it's a very powerful statement. Uh, for Rotary, but you can use it in your daily life and everything that you do as well. You can. In fact, uh, we just pointed out a little while ago that uh, the founder of Walgreens, I think, has uh, recommended that that four-way test be put in all their pharmacies. And uh, I had a small business, and I had the four-way test on the wall in, in, uh, in our business right there in the lobby when you walked in so that people could see it and understand that that was the way our company was going to operate. And I think a lot of the Rotarians in our district who have small companies uh, have that four-way test somewhere in their building uh, to let their employees and their customers, uh, anybody that does their suppliers, anyone else, know that they operate uh, by the four-way test. If you do that, if you operate by the four-way test and you continue that in your personal life, in your business life, uh, whatever it is, in your Rotary life, uh, you're going to find that, that the road is much easier to travel when you do that. I agree. I absolutely agree with you. Johnny, uh, we are streaming this live currently on Facebook, and uh, we do have one question. So I want to ask you that question. Is uh, And the question is, is there anywhere you can purchase a plaque of the four-way test? 
There is actually. Uh, Russell Hampton has some very nice plaques uh, that have the four-way test. Uh, if you go online to uh, ruh.com, uh, you can uh, then go and, and find those plaques. Um, uh, and they have all different uh, types. They have some that are like sit on the desk. They have the wall plaque that can go on the wall. Uh, so there are several different uh, models of that out there that you can that you can purchase from them. And there may be some other suppliers. I'm not trying to cut anybody out, but I just know for sure that that's one place you can find it. Um, one more question in regards to that to that question is: Do you have to be a Rotarian to purchase one? No, you don't. I think Russell Russell Hampton will be happy to take your order regardless of who you are, or where you are. They are uh, particular for something like that. Uh, you know, there are many many people who work in uh, in an organization like Walgreen, for instance, who are not Rotarians. Unfortunately, we'd love for them all to be, but uh, they, obviously they're not. Uh, but they still have the four-way test on the wall. The four-way test is not something just for Rotarians to follow. It's something that everyone can follow and use to uh, make their lives and the lives of the people they interact with better. And there's a wide variety of things also on Russell Hampton. It's, it's a great resource for everything, Rotary. We would only, we, they, they won't sell the, the pins uh, to other than ro Rotary or Rotarians, but uh, Rotary clubs are Rotarians. Uh, because uh, if you're not a Rotarian, you shouldn't be wearing the pin. But, uh, but they will provide things like the four-way test and other, other uh, goods like that for you. Well, Johnny, thank you again for your time this morning. Appreciate you uh, coming on and sharing your words of wisdom about our powerful four-way test. Thank you, Donald. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it, is, it is a pleasure to be with you guys. I, I, I'm looking forward to the time we can get back together. I, I want to get, uh, get our clubs back together. I truly miss the fellowship, the fun that we have when we get together as Rotarians. Uh, and we're going to find some way still to celebrate uh, some of the successes of this year. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what form that's going to take at this point, but we are going to find a way to make sure that those people and those clubs who have put in the effort this year to uh, make this district great, that they are in fact recognized and uh, look forward to maybe to doing that uh, sometime in the, in the near future. We look forward to that update. Uh, our next interview will be on Wednesday, April the 8th at 11 a.m. Tune in. We're going to be hearing from, about schools in Ghana with Dr. Ann Matthews, former Rotary International Vice President, and Nancy Barbie uh, from Zone 33. Great. Thanks again. You guys have a great week. Have a great day, folks. Thanks for tuning in. See everyone Wednesday, 11 a.m. Bye-bye now.